Quitting PHP was a very difficult decision for me. And I want to give you guys details. Let me explain. This video was brought to you by Diginic Academy, your number one source to learn how to make money programming and get that six figure salary you desire. Our academy have a wide range of courses, including 3K in 30 days, our mentorship membership program, and much, much more. When you sign up for our free community, you get access to our membership community with like-minded professional who's gonna help take your career to the next level. So let's take the first step to get started and really take your career to the next level with our seven step money guide today. So let's go ahead and click the link below to sign up for our free seven step guide to help you get your career started today. Believe it or not guys, let me tell you a story as far as just why I quit PHP programming and it actually wasn't my decision alone. It was a lot more uh, com components involved than me just saying I quit PHP and I I'm not doing any projects in PHP anymore. And I want you guys to really listen to what happened to me so that when this happened to you, and it's going to depend on which programming language you use or you picked, uh, the market dictate what you need to do professionally as a software developer. It's different when you have a hobby and you're working at home and you're doing your passion projects. I'm talking about if you are a professional software developer working for a company, especially a growing company, a company that want to really uh, get an advantage in the market and scale out and have different projects, you're gonna find yourself working with softwares that you really are programming languages that you really didn't think you'll be working on and I want to give you guys a reason well what first of all what to expect when this happened and how to handle it and the expectations going forward so guys let me tell you my story I made some notes here so that um, I don't get lost and um, I can give you guys a uh, clear understanding of what's happening with some easy points. So guys, yeah, been working on a few projects, um, big, 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 big integration project and um, trying to consolidate some companies, trying to consolidate infrastructure, technology, and really massive, massive scale. And in the past, I did a lot of work with um, uh, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, and life was good. Um, it was one of the first programs I use. Um, I always preach it, but lately I haven't been leveraging it. I've been using SQL, specifically Microsoft SQL Server, and structure query language based off of the project that I've been working on at least the last past year and a half. It's been longer, but I noticed a difference between the programming language that I use for our just programming. So that being said, guys. I start to look back and I was like, man, I don't do any PHP work anymore uh, at all and uh, don't have any signs of doing it, at least at this particular moment. Uh, part of it is I'm focusing exclusively on the database side right now, but even if I got a front end job right now as far as just, hey, I need some PHP work done, if it's not an existing client that I know the infrastructure that we can turn it around and get back to the primary project, I'm probably going to turn it down. and not say php is bad <clears throat> it's just that my company is a data focused company guys that's what we're focusing on now you're going to find out pretty quickly number one you're going to start naturally niching down and once you niche down it makes your organization run more efficient and it gives you a opportunity to scale be able to op be able to solve problems quickly especially when you start um, bringing in more staff they know hey this is the focus if a company if a client wants anything outside of this Depending on what situation, how fast we can turn around, <clears throat> we'll take on that work, but we primarily work on SQL. We primarily work on database work. And that's how, here at Digilink, how I'm rolling going pretty soon. You guys are gonna have this where you're gonna focus more on the front end, focus more on C Sharp, focus more on Java, Python, depending on what that particular client or that market wants, you're going to naturally focus down. At this point, people start to realize, man, Rod, 
you know, I started off using PHP. I started off using Python. I don't use it anymore. I'm using this other programming language. I'm afraid that I'll lose these skills. Don't worry about that, guys. It's just like riding a bike. You know, once you learn the basics of programming, the fundamentals, you actively working on projects with a programming language, it's just a matter of switching over, understanding the context, understanding the specifics of that language as far as just the use cases, you know, what's the advantages and why you use it. A lot of people come into a lot of projects thinking I'm going to force a particular programming language down this client's throat, which in the past, you was able to do that pretty good because nobody really knew what was going on. They didn't have existing infrastructure and you had the flexibility to add something in a stack that really didn't in line with what that client want. Um, this happened to me on older projects. I used to come in and look at a lot of websites and I see just uh, my Microsoft shop or a um, a Microsoft <clears throat> um, infrastructure that has this off the wall Joomla uh, non popular framework and CMS in it just out of the blue and I'm like guys you had to go do new infrastructure that's to account for this and even then it's not a mainstream um, open source project and it's classic hey a new developer an existing developer came in they ain't even think about the client's existing infrastructure come in this is what i do this is what i'm going to put in here regardless of what they do and they wasn't supervised as far as just or question why are you doing this and the client was stuck with this outdated technology that they didn't know how to manage as far as just scale wise obviously that account or that uh that vendor end up um, losing business or, or didn't survive I had to come in on the back end I'm like why, why do you guys do this and that was the first website they did or the first real content management website that they did and they didn't necessarily look at it uh, in that case guys if you're gonna go outside of the standard um, company software stack at least make sure the solution you put in place is a mainstream uh, uh, solution or software like WordPress. You know, I work with a ton of uh, Microsoft C Sharp related shops. And you may think, well, WordPress is, you know, outside of that, you probably won't want to implement that. But guys, WordPress has a huge community with huge supported um, plugins and themes and all this stuff to where if it's the best solution versus the Microsoft counterpart, it makes sense. But if you are not even picking the most popular, well supported, a huge community is going to be difficult but guys let me get back on topic this is the kind of stuff that uh, at the end of the day you have to really leverage and I talk about this in my seven step guide so if you haven't already go sign up for that I'm gonna be making updates to this I'm gonna start niching down my my content to really uh, be more specific on the tech side and um, kind of focus on the data driven stuff guys so if you already signed up for my seven step guide go check out my premium courses I'm redoing everything in my academy me guys so if you buy it now at the cheaper rate you get all the new stuff and the most updated stuff for free going forward so go ahead and take advantage of that links are below <clears throat> so guys at the end of the day that's why i end up quitting php not because i just made a conscious effort to say no more php it's just that the projects that i'm taking on right now is mostly database focused and don't worry about losing your skills or um as long as you're working on a top 10 top 15 programming language and you have the opportunity to get to the enterprise level which is mostly job and shitty sharp um some python work um if you work for if you're at silicon or some of the larger markets you're going to get into the uh reacts different frameworks the sexy anglers and all that stuff but at the end of the day regardless of where you're at in the software development world just make sure you, whatever you're learning translate to other companies and other industries so that if you need to leave your existing situation it makes sense and um, you always taking that next step even after as you moving um, to different companies um, <clears throat> so that I make sure I don't forget or um, any points that I want to cover 
professional versus hobby projects, guys. This is another one. A lot of you guys may think, hey, I'm sitting with this program line because this is the one I enjoy the most. Yeah, from a hobby standpoint, go right ahead. If you're doing this for a passion, a passion project, you don't have to do anything for a client, turn this video off. But if this is for a client, this is for somebody who's paying you money, your opinions of the best program language doesn't matter. The market's going to dictate that. And if you don't fall in line with that, you're going to eventually come out in the matter of your deadlines you're not going to meet. Uh, other people are going to start questioning your decisions on your software stack and what program language you use. And as the net or the uh, internet, software development matures more it's consolidating guys so it's more standardized than what it would have been you know in the late 90s early 2000s where it's basically the wild wild west and whatever ideas you can come up with you can implement them in a company because they didn't have any existing infrastructure you try to do that in 2020 you in trouble <laughs> because companies have existing infrastructure you got to know what works what integrates with their current software stack and take all that in consideration and don't come in blind and say i don't care what they got in here i'm putting this in here with no regards of looking and integrating you're just setting yourself up for failure guys don't give us a bad name we already trying to remain relevant and not a like, like a call center at most of these companies you're just making it worse and uh at the end of the day guys do not force php in a software stack that it doesn't belong um most of my clients when it comes to wordpress a lot of the so uh, popular free um lambda stack applications and cpanel it's okay it works great um, but a lot of times when you start to get into the enterprise C sharp uh, Java world Yeah, there are some integrations that we can leverage there as far as just uh, marketing PHP uh, marketing automation and some of the CRM functionality from a web perspective, but don't get carried away guys like subscribe to the content If you haven't already go check out my premium courses like subscribe to the content if you agree comment below if you disagree, comment below. And you guys see the link over here? Sign up for that seven step guide, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.